Uh, so my topic is coach defenders, how to man mark and then intercept passes. Um, so my interpretation initially is that it doesn't just say defenders as in a back four or a unit, it says defenders in general. So I think that can apply anywhere on the pitch. Um, around the mark and intercept, I think for me the biggest things will be when to man mark, when the right time to intercept is, so what the triggers around that are. Technically, how to intercept, which foot do you leave with if you're defending, or what the trigger is to actually go and press and tackle as opposed to just um, press. In terms of the organisation, and I'm open for feedback on it, but this is where I'm at at the moment, is playing a 4-4-2 versus a 4-4-2. Um, I have gone with the idea, after a conversation with Alan, and I think he's a fan of it, of having a goal and a goalkeeper to basically be my five, but give the defending team something to do in terms of going towards a goal to create some tempo. The number nine who's up the top here, the initial condition is that he will have to stay behind the, the flat disc line and somebody will have to join him in order to score. So it will be that moment hopefully will, will create the, uh, the defensive team to be actually dislocated and, and out of position to create a bit of a transition so they have to recover to then get in position to either mark or intercept. So I want to make that realistic. But again, I'm open, to, I'm open to advice or ideas around whether the goal is necessary or whether the line is, is adequate and we can work our way out to recycle it. In terms of the units, they're matched up, so um, I think that would give my back four versus the front four a good opportunity to man mark um, through the midfield, um, the eight and the four, and then the, the opposing players out here. So that's kind of the organisation. Um, in terms of key coaching points, um, when to man mark, when to intercept, recovery to get organised if we're out of shape, um, tracking runners, and obviously that comes into marking, so I'm not just standing there and actually pressing somebody, following somebody if they overlap or, or picking up the, the appropriate man, um, and preventing supply, so I think that's important in terms of before you actually go and mark and tackle, can you cut the ball off? Um, decision making around that. Uh, when to be tight to a defender, when to perhaps, um, if you get into a 1v1 defensive situation and they face up, how to defend against that. Um, obviously if there's no pressure on the ball, talking about things like dropping off and that might enable us the opportunity to intercept, so if we do drop off and they try to play behind and we do it well, maybe we'll intercept from there. Uh, and then obviously once we've secured the ball and won it, can we, can we go forward, so I think that's important as, as part of the transition. In terms of the midfield and, and working with those defenders, I think it's going to be really important to work with whichever whichever of the four and the eight is deepest to screen. So I think that's just going to be a good opportunity to work with um, that, work with this player here to try and cut passes off into the nine and ten. But I also want to actually, because the topic seems quite broad, um, make sure that I work on my midfield players marking and intercepting as much as I do with the back four if possible in that time. So that's. More or less where I'm at. Okay. I have a question about your red nine. Yep. At the moment, he's it, the only one in that other end apart yes. from the goalkeeper. Yep. So technically, what in an offside position, mm -hmm. not offside, but yes. in an offside position, how do teammates get the ball to him? That's a fair point. Um, do they play it to him? Yeah, that was the plan. That was so the they plan. play it to him in an offside position, which means as soon as he touches it, he's offside. Yeah, that didn't cross my mind. So that's fair. you need to deal with that, don't yep. you? So it could be that they have to run over the line to, yep. to join him. And or you create an offside line behind him. Well, the offside line the offside is, is the halfway line, line, isn't it? Yeah, or the two defenders. Or, 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 or that, yeah. Okay. So I'm very open to feedback on But just think that. about that. Yeah. That's all. I think um, I think your, your session, the, the detail around your session is quite important. Yeah. And getting your players to recognise when they can mark aggressively and when they need to say. Um, and, and understanding that, the detail around that uh, marking aggressively. And in a minute, before you disappear, I, I just showed, I may have shown you it before, but the idea of, of, of sort of timelining your session and identifying what it is you'd like to coach at certain stages through the practice. Gameplay. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Anything else? Yeah. So, would you do you think the goal has its place if the keeper's in there? If it, if Personally, like the goal because I think I think for two reasons. One, it gives you more natural transitions yeah. and, and and recycling. Plus, it motivates the players. Big time. That, that's for me. I, I don't like as a player. I don't like running over a line. Like if you're playing for Reds, you can, yeah, you can get over there and score a goal. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it's just so going to be adjusting that condition and the position. So we're, all, we're all kids at heart, aren't we? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what we like to do. Okay. Any, anything else? Anyone else? See it as workable? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you.